How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and this is PS Ready, my channel all about PlayStation. I've got three great topics for you guys today. The first thing we're gonna be talking about is the next PlayStation Showcase. After that, we're gonna talk about this hack that was just unhacked by Sony. And then finally, we're gonna talk about a new patent that very heavily hints at what we could expect out of the next PlayStation handheld. It's an awesome video for someone like me, a big fan of the PlayStation Vita and the PSP. Let's talk about this PlayStation Showcase though because I have a hunger and a need Need for a new PlayStation showcase more than I think I have ever before. There have been some big gaps between them. They started out doing them in November and then last year they waited all the way until May and right now we're in March. So the timing lines up perfectly for a new PlayStation showcase. The last one happened in May of 2023 and it was decent. Like the games that they showed were really good. I'll give you a list of them in a second to kind of refresh your memory. But the big problem was there was a big long gap between that show case and the one before I'm pretty sure we had to wait from November or around November of 2021 to go all the way until May of 2023 without having a big showcase because you know the first party studios were working on their games that weren't ready to be shown off yet whatever the reasons were the wait was too long and the games no I don't think they could have been good enough to really be satisfying but now we're back in this cadence of every year which is great we got a huge look at Spider-Man 2 gameplay it was the demo that was like over 10 or 15 minutes long so that was a great way to show the game off we also got metal gear solid 3 delta announced which looks really cool if you're a fan of metal gear like i am alan wake 2 and assassin's creed mirage got release dates and final fantasy 7 rebirth got a new trailer i had not played remake at the time so i wasn't really excited for rebirth but it did look pretty cool alan wake 2 obviously became one of my favorite games of last year it was like a really cool take on the resident evil formula and brought back alan wake in a cool way marathon got announced and that's a completely different game than what they announced bungie's really in it right now I, I i used to be a huge destiny fan and i really could not care less what bungie has going on right now i i just don't really know what marathon is but i hope it turns out good and then of course the biggest blunder was announcing these live service games like fair games and concord with trailers that don't really even tell you what the games are the fact that they're live service games they're already fighting an uphill battle so i feel like when you announce games like that you really have to come out swinging and these cinematic trailers that don't show off any gameplay that doesn't really do it for people back then people were thinking the reason they were announced so early was more of like a hey we're working on these games and we're hiring so if you think that's cool come work for us but a playstation showcase is not for developers it's for fans and i don't think those were good trailers after that we got some hardware announcements we got the playstation portal which ended up being a big hit for sony that was kind of a surprise and again we're talking about that later in the video we also got the pulse elite headset announced i just picked it up yesterday we also got the pulse explorer headset announced and the reason i picked up the Pulse Elite is because while at first I was really loving the Pulse Explore earbuds, they've kind of like gotten worse as time has gone on. Like even with the features updates they've added, they stopped connecting completely correctly to the link adapter, which is really annoying. So I'm hoping I get a little bit more of a better experience out of the Elite headset. But so far, my impressions are really good of that as well. As far as that showcase went, I think it was decent. There was a solid offering in terms of third party studios, indie games, smaller games, bigger games games there was a lot of different stuff in different genres we got some looks at first party stuff even though it's not what we really want it's just when you add in that context of how long the wait was for this showcase from the last one it just wasn't what sony really needed at the time because gotta think back to then we were all sitting there like when is the ps5 going to be taken advantage of and a lot of the games they showed off outside of like spider-man 2 didn't really prove that the ps5 was worth the upgrade at that point so with all that being said let's look forward to the next showcase. Jeff Grubb said on his live stream that it's going to be happening around the same time. So either late April or early May, that's a good timing for a showcase. Get out before the early June stuff that happens with Xbox and everyone else. We know that one of the games that they're going to talk about is Silent Hill 2. Apparently from everything I've read, that game is finished. They're just waiting for the marketing to ramp up and get the release date all set. I'm excited about that game. You guys know I love survival horror. I just don't think from what we've seen, it lives up to that pedigree of quality that we expect from Sony from exclusives. It's not a first party title, of course, but you know, they're releasing games in rapid succession lately that, you know, 
aren't really up to the technical standard that I would like. I think Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is a standout of a good one, but Rise of the Ronin, its performance issues are not great. And just the timing of that game's release right up alongside Dragon's Dogma 2 didn't really make a lot of sense to me. I think it would have been smarter for them to hold that game back and finish it up from a technical standpoint and then get farther away from the other open world fantasy RPG that released on the same week. But if Silent Hill 2 is the smallest game, I think we're in for something pretty good here because there's a ton of stuff we need to hear about. Naughty Dog, their next game is not going to be The Last of Us Part 3. Neil Druckmann has said this multiple times. It was originally supposed to be The Last of Us Faction's multiplayer live service game that was canceled last year. But all the rumors we've heard have pointed to this being a fantasy RPG from Naughty Dog. They're a gory studio now. Like they've got really crunchy combat. They've got some good third person action in their games. Their stories are second to none in my opinion at least. So I'm excited for that. I hope we also get a little bit of a tease though for The Last of Us Part 3. That's a game I think you can announce early because they have season two of the show coming up. So even if there's a lull in the game development, you have reasons to stay excited about that universe. Uh, Santa Monica Studio is working on some sort of space RPG, if all those leaks and rumors are to be believed. Corey Barlog was talking about it recently on Twitter, so I don't think there's a better time to announce that than right now when we really need to hear from these first party studios. Ghost of Tsushima is getting its PC release. It would be really awesome to line that up with an announcement of Ghost of Tsushima 2. I mean, we don't know for a fact that that's what Sucker Punch is working on, but like they really got something special with Ghost of Tsushima, so I'd personally be very shocked if they didn't announce something related to a sequel. And then we've also heard that Infamous Second Son, the like launch window title from the PlayStation 4 is coming to PC and also getting remastered for PS5. Speaking of remasters, apparently Horizon Zero Dawn is getting a full on remake from Sony. So that should probably be announced as well. We've heard so many rumors about a Bloodborne remake coming at some point. I really hope that the rumors about that not being for PS5, but being for PS6 aren't true. And we finally hear about that. We know that Bluepoint is working on at least a few different games, some original games, some ports or remakes of other games. So we need to hear from them. If they want us to care about fair games and Conquer, they need to show gameplay from those two games. They need to really spell out what they are. I think those might be two service games that they're going to give individual state of plays just because, you know, whenever there's a live service game, they love to do these like 30 to 45 minute deep dives that make them kind of look different than every other live service game we've had over the past few years. I'm not super excited about those. So Sony needs to give me a reason to be. And then I know it's early, but I just watched an interview with the guys behind Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth. And they were saying that they're already hard at work on the third entry in that trilogy. It would be sweet to get a little bit of a tease, you know, just a few months after Final Fantasy VII Rebirth comes out to let us know what we can expect from that universe. But what I really want from this showcase is something I don't know about. Everything leaks these days and Sony does pull it out once in a while with something that never leaked, never had any rumors or anything like that. It would also be awesome to have a game that releases on the day of the showcase, like really give us a spark of excitement that I don't think we've had with the PlayStation 5 for a long time. And knowing it's a showcase uh, and not a state of play, I think that'd be a really good time to announce the PS5 Pro considering the PS Portal was announced in May and then released right at the end of the year around November or December. So that timing lines up as well. When it comes to PS5 Pro, I know one end of the philosophy there is that they should wait as long as possible to announce it because, you know, if you don't have a PS5 yet, you'll be looking at this PS5 Pro coming out in November and you might not want to pick up a PS5 Slim with a bundle or something like that. But my counter to that is that the PS5 Pro is for hardcore users, aka people who already have a PlayStation 5. That's an upgrade console. That's not like something that the average person is going to get over the original PS5 because they're not going to want to spend 600 or 650 bucks. So I think just knowing that they announced the PlayStation Portal and those two headsets at the May showcase last year, that would be a great time to announce the PS5 Pro and the enhanced features and everything like that to really just, you know, in combination with everything else, get people excited for what's to come. That brings us to the second news story, which is all about the PlayStation Portal. The first half of this story goes back to that hack that happened in February. Essentially, if you weren't caught up on that, two Google hackers were able to hack the PS Portal and actually get a PSP emulator running on it. At that time, people got really excited that they would release it and allow them to hack their portals because the biggest problem, in my opinion, with the PS Portal is that like eventually it's just going to become so obsolete that Sony can stop supporting it and then it's just going to collect dust. Unlike my PlayStation Vita, which, you know, they totally neutered the online experience and the shop and everything like that. 
it doesn't get updates anymore, but I can still download the games that work on it from my PlayStation library in perpetuity. And even though it's behind me on my shelf, I still take that thing out once in a while and knock out some Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Whereas with the PS Portal, it could just turn off one day whenever the PS6 or 7 stops supporting it. So having the ability to emulate games on it is really cool. Unfortunately, it turned out that the only reason they hacked it was to show Sony that despite it being a cloud-enabled device, it could still be hacked. And unfortunately, they told Sony about it and exactly what they needed to fix. And Sony very quickly made a patch that fixed the exploit that they were able to take advantage of to actually hack the portal. So uh, yeah, the PS Portal has been unhacked. But the fact it was hacked in the first place kind of leaves the door open for people who don't work at Google, whose job is to kind of find vulnerabilities and help patch them, to hack it themselves and open up emulation possibilities on the device, which I think would be really cool, right? Like having DualSense capabilities in there is awesome, but just the way the controllers feel is great. So having a handheld with a big 1080p screen like that, despite the fact that it only has eight gigabytes of storage with emulated games, I would really like to pick one up for that feature alone. But you also got to keep in mind that when it comes to eight gigabytes of storage, that's not a lot on the surface, right? Like you're not going to be able to download PS4 games or anything onto it. But if you're emulating PSP games or NES games or like Game Boy Advance games or even DS games, those cap out at like 100 megabytes. You could fit a lot of PSP ROMs onto a PlayStation Portal with just eight gigabytes. And again, having that actual PlayStation controller and PlayStation button layout with those awesome sticks and the great triggers and everything in that 1080p huge screen, I think that could be a really cool emulation device. So hopefully the dream is not dead there. I'm sure some hackers will be able to figure it out as time goes on. But there's another reason that I honestly might go pick up a PlayStation Portal this weekend. And that's that this update that Sony did that patched the vulnerability that uh, these hackers found actually seems to improve the video quality on the handheld across the board. This has been written up on a bunch of websites, but I dug a little bit deeper and went over to the Reddit for PlayStation. And there's a ton of posts from people who have portals that say with this new update, they've noticed all the bitrate issues where you would get blocky textures, low res video, some latency. It seems to have been completely eliminated with this new patch for the PlayStation Portal. But the other issue that was pointed out by John Lineman over at Digital Foundry is that uh, the portal's refresh rate is not even with the output frame rate of the games that are coming beamed over the airwaves from your PlayStation 5. So even if a game is running at 60 FPS, it's not an exact matchup. And what that causes is frame pacing issues. So even though it's running at 60 FPS, you're not seeing it at a perfect 60 FPS because there are frames that are lost in the middle. And when you see those frames, that's when you start to see stuttering and weird issues there. So if they're already going back and fixing the network connectivity issues that would cause blocky textures and low res streaming, I think the fact that people are buying this thing will make sure that Sony keeps continuing to work on it. And maybe eventually down the line, they'll also patch that other issue. Considering we just got this patch that fixed one of my major issues with it, uh, I really want to grab one of these things. My brother's been in town lately and my best friend George has been coming over to hang out with us every night. And when we're playing games together, uh, using the TV to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, not the best move, right? Like people want to watch stuff on the TV. We've been putting on movies. We've been putting on Nuzlocke challenges and stuff like that on YouTube. So uh, I really want to get a PlayStation portal. So while they're playing Final Fantasy Tactics and this Pokemon MMO that my brother plays on his phone, I can knock out side quests and stuff like that in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and actually work my way towards that platinum that I am once again committing to getting. But speaking of handheld, let's talk about this new patent from Sony that lets us know what they're working on in terms of this new handheld that's going to be a true successor to the PSP and the PlayStation Vita. So the bullet points on this patent directly allude to an actual handheld. So knowing that the PS Portal is already out, anything related to that would have been patented a long time ago when they were already working on it. So this patent definitely applies to new hardware. It's a really long patent. It's full of technical jargon, but I picked out the three big bullet points from it. And the first one is it switches between playing a game on handheld mode and a console. So if you're talking about a handheld that's PSP style or PS Vita style, that leads right into the rumors we've heard over and over again lately from great sources like Insider Gaming that this eventual handheld will be built to not only play older games like the PS1, PS2, PSP generation, but also be built to play full on PS5 games. And the vision there would be just like the Steam Deck where you can get a game like God of War, take it on a plane or a train or in your backyard or something like that, make a bunch of progress. And then when you go down in the basement at night to play on your main gaming PC, everything you did in the game was already beamed 
into the cloud and download it right to your PC and you can pick up right where you left off. But the cool thing is they'll be able to like kind of fine tune the specs so that when you're playing on the portal, you'll get the best experience there. And then when you switch to your PS5, unlike some games on PC, you won't have to rechange all of your settings to be in desktop mode where you can run the game at high uh, settings and play at like 60 FPS or more. The second point that alludes to this being a new handheld is that it's going to support cloud streaming, which the weirdest thing about the portal is that while it streams over the cloud, it's not streaming from the cloud. It's streaming from your actual PlayStation 5. It actually doesn't have any capability to take advantage of the PS Plus premium features, which are basically the evolution of PlayStation Now. So this new handheld, in addition to everything else we just talked about, will be able to stream games from the cloud, which is sweet. And then finally, it says it'll be able to use cloud server processes to improve gameplay inputs and response time. So I don't really know what that's all about. I guess it's like new technology to make latency work a little. No. And then the third point is that it's going to be able to use the cloud to improve things like response time and button inputs. And all I can think of there is that they're just evolving their cloud technology to eliminate latency, which is great because that's another huge problem I have with streaming games from the cloud is that you notice the latency immediately. Like when you hit the button, there's a real delay from when the thing you did actually happens on the screen. So this handheld is going to have some sort of new feature that the portal does not have where it's going to be able to eliminate latency if it's streaming from a server versus streaming from your PlayStation 5. So it's easy to imagine this handheld being like the jack of all trades PlayStation device. You could go back and play games from the PS1, PS2, PS3 maybe if Sony ever gets off their ass and does full on emulation that would be awesome but if they don't you still have the capability to stream the games over PS Plus from the cloud which like I'm never going to do that but at least the capability is there. They could even work in PS Vita games because all these devices like the portal have touch screens which has been the big barrier for getting those games onto the PS5. They could also then play PS4 and PS5 games though and at that point I'm never going to buy a Sony release on Steam again like just the capability of being able to get a fine-tuned experience from Sony with their first party games that I can take on the go and then get home and just have my saves with all my trophies and everything like that and my full digital library ready to go that's just so enticing to me because while yes I own a lot of games on Steam the vast majority of my library is over on my PlayStation 5 and the biggest reason I'm excited about new Sony hardware in terms of a handheld is just they're really good at it I mean if you hold up the Vita now obviously like the screen is a little small the resolution isn't that great it's like 536p or something like that but it really did a good job of translating the PS3 and 4 experience to a handheld device but the next generation of handhelds is just so much better than what we had back in the day because we can take the games we're already playing on the go versus waiting for you know I, I forget the studio's name I think they were called like oh man I forget their name but at first they were the people who made Resistance Burning Skies and apparently they made that in like six months and then they turned around and made Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified in like three months which ended up being one of the best selling games on the PlayStation Vita despite how mediocre it was it was cool having games like Uncharted Golden Abyss and stuff and Killzone Mercenary but at the end of the day if you're getting this handheld to a point where it's having console style graphics just let me play the actual console games on the go because that's what I've been doing for two years now with the Steam Deck and it's great so yeah I think this is just more confirmation that Sony is working on a brand new handheld when they patent stuff it tends to come true which I really like about Sony and they've been patenting a ton of stuff related to this new PlayStation handheld lately so it's only a matter of time until we actually get to see it anyway guys that's all I've got for you today make sure you let me know what you think down in the comments below remember to subscribe and set your notifications to all if you haven't already as always my name is Jimmy Champagne I'll see you in the next one thanks for watching and shape on